We are from the nor from north and south. We are from tiny apartments and expensive homes. We are from this city and from others far away. We are from big families and dinners made for one. We are from stages of grief and stages of love. We are from hot summers and cold winters. We are from kitchens with passed down recipes and front porches with old familiar swings. We are from the dust of the earth and the stars of the sky. We are from a lot of places, but today we are here. Today we are here. Holy God, gather us in. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we have come from all over. We have come with our own pains and joys. We have come because we want to praise your name. We have come because we want to be closer to you. We have come today so that we might feel your spirit moving in this place and be empowered to go back into your world, making disciples of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Okay, so if I were to ask you where you were from, what would you tell me? Where are you from? Bedford. Bedford. Did you come from anywhere else? Did you come from anywhere else? You're from Bedford all your life? Okay. Well, you know, when people ask me if where I came from, because I didn't come from Bedford, I didn't live here all my life, this is a picture of the state of Virginia. State of Virginia. There's Bedford with that red arrow. I have to say, I came from Alta Vista, which is right there. 30 minutes, 30 minutes. But then, if they really asked me where I was from, hey, Lawson, if they really asked me where I was from, I'd have to say, I was from Gloucester. That's over here, near Norfolk, Virginia Beach. I grew up really near the beach. We'd go over to the beach all the time when I was little. Good seafood, oh my goodness. So people might say, she's from the beach. She might be a hippie. She might be a, she might be a seafood snob. She's one of those Eastern Virginia people. She's kind of strange. But then, if you ask me where was I born, I'd have to say, now let me switch from the state of Virginia over here, sorry, all my props. I'd have to say, I was from Pennsylvania. See, there's Virginia. That's the picture we just had, but I was born up here. So people might say, oh, she's from the north. <laughs> she is not from the south. Now, when I go up north to visit my cousins, that's a different thing because they say Yun's, Yun's doing okay. Yun's coming up for the reunion. And when I get up there and say, y'all doing okay, <laughs> they laugh. But anyhow, so, you know, people might say weird things because I'm from up north. Well then, if you get really down to it, well, also, my dad was born in Pennsylvania. My mom was born in Tennessee. So I spent a lot of time in Tennessee, and I have that southern blood in Tennessee. Now, if you got really into it and said, where are you from? Now we're going to a map of the world, you see? My dad's people came from Germany. Now see, here's us over here. Virginia's right in here. Pennsylvania's up in here. Germany's way over here, across the pond, as they say. Well, you know, a lot of bad people came out of Germany at some times. And so people might say, oh my goodness, they're German. Gave me my blonde hair and blue eyes, but it also may have given me a reputation because bad people came from there. And during the war, Germany was fighting against us. So you see, places that I come from in my life, they have different things that make me what I am today. And some people might look at those things and say, hmm, that's not good. But other people, like the people in Bedford say, hey, come on in and live with us, this is great. Be in our church, be in our family, this is a wonderful place and they accept me for who I am. Now Jesus went through this, you wouldn't think he would, but when Jesus was calling his disciples, there was one disciple named Nathaniel that they said, hey, we found the Messiah, come see us. And he says, isn't he just Joseph's son, the guy from Nazareth, like the kid from Alta Vista? What good can come out of Nazareth? Like what good can come out of the North? What good can come out of Germany? Oh. But what good did come out of Nazareth? We accepted him. Everyone who accepted him has a better new life. And we accept other people in his name. People who come from all over make things interesting. I have a cousin who's from Germany. She cooks great food. I have a cousin from Pennsylvania who makes the best gobs you've ever had. But all those things together make us Americans. Make us God's people. Make us Christians when we accept other people no matter where they're from or what they look like. And so we want to be like that. We want to accept Jesus and all his people. Let's pray. Father God, 
People can be strangers to us, but still they are our brothers in Christ, brothers and sisters in you. We all came from Adam and Eve, so we're all related in some way. Help us to accept each of them and love them as you would. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture lesson today comes from the Gospel of John, the first chapter, beginning with the 35th verse. The next day, John was standing again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus walking along, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he asked, what are you looking for? They said, Rabbi, which is translated teacher, where are you staying? He replied, come and see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two disciples who heard what John said and followed Jesus was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. 
He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. He led him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, Jesus wanted to go into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. Nathanael responded, Can anything from Nazareth be good? Philip said, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, and he said about him, Here is a genuine Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, How do you know me? Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are God's son. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. I assure you that you will see heaven open and God's angels going up to heaven and down to earth on the human one. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Where are you from? That is the question we often ask people when we first meet them, isn't it? And I, I love answering this question because sometimes when I'm in a mischievous mood, I will say Ethiopia. <laughs> I was born in Asmara, Ethiopia, which is not in Ethiopia now. Now it's in the country of Eritrea. And people will look at me like, you don't look African. <laughs> Usually when I get this answer and I share it, the next question is, oh, were your parents missionaries? No. My dad was in the army. And Ethiopia was one of the few bases that he was allowed to have my mom join him. And so when I'm not feeling mischievous, I say I'm from Greenville, South Carolina. I say that because most people have heard of Greenville, but I actually grew up in Taylor's, South Carolina. And Taylor's is a suburb of Greenville. But we ask this question, where are you from? Because learning the answer helps us to connect with one another. So let's see where our Main Street family is from. And those of you that are worshiping with us online, you can put your answers in the YouTube comments section. But how many of you here today are lifelong residents of Bedford? Raise your hand. All right. Okay. Put your hands down. Thank you. All right. How many of you moved here as adults? Oh. All right. Thank you. Have any, anyone moved here in your childhood or teen years? Ah, okay. Dana, it looks like you're a lone one in that category. Oh, up there. Uh, thank you, Jason. All right. All right. So we have most of our people here at Main Street are not from Bedford originally. Today we are beginning a new worship series entitled, I've Been Meaning to Ask. And through this series, we are going to be using some questions to help us learn how to be more 
intentional in listening to one another, to find connections with each other, despite the differences between us, and to help us to create space for compassionate dialogue with one another, as well as seeking the holy in those that we meet. So the question we are starting with today, I've been meaning to ask, where are you from? The answers to this question can help us learn more about each other, more than just where somebody was born or where somebody was raised, but it can help us understand their background, their customs, their societal norms, what they're used to, whether they say y'all or you one, right? Yeah. Where you are from is just a beginning question that can lead to more questions. And that helps us this, convey this curiosity and this desire to learn more about someone. To see how God has revealed God's self in and through someone else's life that just might be totally different than in your life. To see God in and through a person who doesn't have anything in common with you and who you might initially reject. But if you're curious, if you allow yourself to risk, and are bold enough to go deeper with someone, you will be amazed at how God shows up. See, when we ask these curious questions that help us to connect with others in new ways, we are responding to God's invitation to come and see. Come and see how God is working in ways that we might never had imagined. That's what's happening in the scripture for today. First, John the Baptist is inviting people to come and see when he says, look, the Lamb of God. Two of John's followers take him up on that invitation and they follow Jesus. But they still don't see Jesus fully. They see him as a teacher, so they call him Rabbi. Rabbi, where are you staying? Where are you from? Right? They want to know more. They realize that they don't know all there is to know about Jesus, and that Jesus has, oh, so much more to teach them and to reveal to them. And Jesus responds, come and see. Raj Nadella lets us know that the, the Greek word for seeing in this verse literally means know, perceive, or understand. Nadella explains that Jesus seems to suggest that the followers called him rabbi because they did not fully perceive him. He invites them to his place so they can perceive him. Jesus is inviting them to a, a deeper level of curiosity, one that entails a, a willingness to learn as well as unlearn prior assumptions. When the followers then spend the day with him, and they call him Messiah. They stay with Jesus and their lives are transformed. So much so that they invite others to come and see as well. Andrew was one of those two followers and he reaches out to his brother Simon. Come and see, we have found the Messiah. Jesus continues to invite people to come and see God in the flesh when he meets Philip. Philip doesn't 
want to keep this life-changing relationship to himself, to hold on to that knowledge all his own. So he reaches out to his friend, Nathaniel. We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law and the prophets, Jesus, Joseph's son from Nazareth. Nathaniel judges Jesus without ever even seeing him, without getting to know Jesus for himself, without spending time with Jesus. So Nathaniel responds, Can anything from Nazareth be good? Philip, having seen the awesomeness of Jesus, for himself says come and see come and see David Luz lifts up that throughout John's gospel there are women and men Jews and Gentile rich and poor powerful and vulnerable people of all shapes and sizes and varieties that Jesus meets And Luz writes, to each one, in one way or another, he says the same thing. Come and see. Come and see. God do a new thing. Come and see as your future opens up in front of you. Come and see the grace of God made manifest and acceptable and available Where are you from? Some people, when they hear that you're a Christian, immediately think that you must come from a place of judgment and thou shalt not. May we be a church that says, come and see. Come and see God's grace. God's love, God's acceptance and forgiveness that's lived out in this community of faith. May we be a church that is willing to see people, people in our community where they are from, whether it be places of pain, of suffering, of injustice, of resentment, or prejudice, And that we reach out to those people saying, come and see. Come and see God's peace and God's comfort, God's welcoming, God's acceptance. In the name of Jesus Christ, as we endeavor to live our lives as his followers. May our courageous questions that we've been meaning to ask of those around us, but have been afraid to do so in the past. Help us. Help us to connect with those who are lost and lonely and feel forgotten. May our vulnerable and authentic questions, as we learn where people are from, lead us to glimpse hope and joy and beauty and to become the people that God created us to be. Amen.
go forth this week. Go out asking questions of those you meet so that you can know them better. And then extend the invitation to come and see so that they can know Jesus Christ better. Come and then go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.